right, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. So it says, we, so we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Uh, dear Lord, God, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you um, for once again, just everyone gathered here together, Lord, that we're able to be with each other, Lord, um, and able to hear your word. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, use me and speak through me, Lord, um, God, that uh, it's not out of my own uh, thoughts, but through your Holy Spirit, um, that you've uh, provided this for us, Lord. We pray, Lord, um, for good soil in people's hearts, Lord, and uh, for you to, Lord, please help me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, uh, so we're a couple of weeks past, but, you know, Happy New Year. <laughs> um, and uh, something common with most people, right, with New Year's is the idea of trying to set a bunch of like New Year's resolutions or whatnot, right? Um, those resolutions are usually just goals that people want to set that they want to kind of accomplish for the year. Um, and when you look at a lot of different surveys that ask people about this, you know, uh, there are very common resolutions that people make, right? Of like, oh, I want to be healthier. I want to uh, be more fit. Um, so a lot of health related goals um, and then a lot of financial goals too of, you know, I want to spend less money this year, or I want to get a better job, or uh, basically get more money. Um, I know Victor and I, we talked about trying to set a goal for each other to keep each other accountable, to be uh, more healthy, fit, you know, eat better, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of mine has been to sleep more. Um, that involves sleeping earlier. Um, and. Uh, it's also pretty well known that a lot of people, when they set up these New Year resolutions, that uh, it doesn't really work out <laughs> usually. Um, actually, I believe some places say like within like two weeks, like the second Friday of the week, people call it as like quitters day because most people quit <laughs> their New Year's resolutions by that day. Um, and. Uh, these resolutions don't have to just be about fitness and health. Um, a lot of people do ones related to hobbies. I know that I, a new thing for me this year is pickleball. So I'm trying to get to a certain level there. Um, but as Christians, we usually also have our own resolutions related to our faith. Um, so I've talked to like a lot of my friends and they'll say very similar things, right? Of, oh, this year I want to read the Bible more. Um, maybe for some people it's like, I want to read all of the Bible in one year. Um, a lot of people will say things like, oh, this year I want to grow closer to God, um, to pray more often. Um, there's some people who have also told me, oh, like, <laughs> my resolution is to come to church more often. Um, that's a good one. Um, but also, another resolution can be come to church on time. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so when you look at surveys, right, people make these resolutions, um, but uh, so we mentioned like the second week, right? People quit by the first month, usually around like, they say like 30% ish of people have already quit. And even going to the end of the year, then it's less than 10% of people say that they actually kept with their resolution. And there are a lot of different studies and things that talk about, you know, why people kind of give up on their resolutions. Um, but I think one of the most important aspects of, you know, actually making a change um, and actually going through with achieving some of these resolutions is whether or not you're able to successfully develop a habit, right? Uh, the Bible doesn't explicitly refer to the word habit in most translations, other than there's that one verse that talks about like how some people are in the habit of not meeting. Um, but the definition of a habit, right, according to the dictionary, is a settled tendency or usual manner of behavior uh, acquired mode of behavior that has become nearly or completely involuntary. So it's a usual manner of behavior or tendency, something that we do like pretty often. Um, and we've done it enough that it's easier for us to do. It's almost automatic. We don't have to struggle with it uh, as much. And so that implies that this a habit is something that we do 
on a regular basis, oftentimes like something that you do every day. Um, this implies a lot of you know, biblical principles in order to develop habits because we have to have that perseverance and we have to have that discipline in order to develop these habits. And usually with habits, we have you know, good habits, bad habits, right? Good habits, exercising, eating healthy, sleeping, praying, reading the word. And then we have bad habits. So good habits, we try to do more of. Bad habits, we try to do less of. So uh, common ones are you know, just spending too much time on social media, on different screens, watching too much entertainment, eating too much or eating excessively or unhealthy foods, um, missing church, or again, coming to church late um, is a bad habit. And so uh, in order to really achieve these resolutions that people have, um, especially when it comes to things that we want to uh, do, like grow closer to God, um, we need to develop those good godly habits. Um, and we need to uh, think about how do we actually get there, right? So a lot of times when people have these goals, they just imagine, oh, I want to be like uh, healthier. And then you don't really think of what are the day-to-day -day, you know, steps that you have to take in order to get there. Um, so people kind of get stuck on like the end result. Um, or they might picture, you know, oh, like I want to grow closer to God. And then that's about it. And if you don't have those habits that you build up to actually get there, then you're not really going to get there. <laughs> um, so in order to do that, we need to have those practical daily steps. Um, it's easy to look at someone like, um, I really don't like it actually when people say like, oh, like you're so talented with like guitar or something. Partly because like, it took like years <laughs> and like practicing every day in order to get there. And like when we think about those goals and habits, people again think about just like the end result, but they don't think about all the things that you have to do in order to get there. Um, it might be easy to look at like a pastor or a leader and say, wow, like they're so mature in their faith. I wish I could be like that. Um, but you don't think about necessarily or see all the steps that they had to take every day, um, you know, daily in the word, daily in prayer and going closer with God um, in order to achieve that. I think some people wish that uh, there's just some supernatural thing that happens where God just like uh, makes it so that you achieve something, which can happen and does happen. But by and large, most people have to take those steps to develop those good habits in order to have a stronger relationship with God um, or in order to further develop their faith. So, uh, you know, Pastor Real has talked about people who, you know, go do these deliverances and like healings and amazing experiences with God. And that helps kickstart the motivation. That's like in the beginning of the year, why people start is because we're like, oh, it's a new year, now we're motivated, we're gonna go do this. Um, but Pastor Rose also talked about how a lot of those same people that experience the miracle, the healing, they end up falling away because they end up going back to essentially the bad habits. They never learn to develop that good habit of sticking day by day with the Lord. Uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 11 to 16, 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verses 11 to 16, Paul is giving these instructions to Timothy, who is a younger person that's going to lead a church. Uh, Paul says, command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things, immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching, persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So Paul is giving Timothy a whole bunch of uh, different instructions, but the most important part is him saying, that Timothy, you have to practice these things, right? You have to develop the habit of doing these things routinely. You have to immerse yourself in them. It's not something that 
is like the one time action. Like, you know, we know that when someone just goes to the gym for the first time, they're not now, okay, now they're healthy <laughs> or now they're fit, right? It's the habit, it's the daily, they've been doing this consistently every day that eventually you end up seeing the end result. Um, and so in the same way, um, when we think about our faith, if we want to make progress, if we want to grow closer to God, if we want to um, really feel like we're growing and maturing, then it's important that we have to develop the habit. We have to do these things uh, every day. Uh, I also think about this sort of how the Bible describes the righteous person in Psalm 1. So if you look at Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. So the Bible is describing a righteous person um, as a tree. So in this case, I picture one of those like, you know, big, strong trees um, that does not wither. So it's not like swaying to and fro by uh, its environment. It's able to be strong and yields fruit. But how did the tree get there? Right? We know that the tree just didn't appear. <laughs> um, it started off as a plant or like a, one of those tiny little plants um, from a seed. And then day by day, after a lot of time, usually, uh, then it grows, then it becomes a tree. Right? In verse three, it says that it's planted by streams of water. Um, so we know that it's because it's consistently every day got these streams of water, right? Got the word of God, the spirit of God uh, going into it, that it then becomes a tree, that it then becomes a righteous person. And we also see in verse two, right? That the righteous person is the person that meditates on the law day and night. So they develop that habit of being able to read the word um, and meditate on it. Uh, Pastor Real has talked in the past about, you know, our lives being basically like a system that you have to consider the input and the output Right, um, and that's what you know. Developing habits is is you're trying to uh, change yourself so that you develop the good habits, so that you're receiving the good inputs every day of prayer, of the word, and you're trying to remove the bad habits um, so that we can continue to grow. And again, all of us are not perfect, um, and we all have struggles, and we know that there are areas that we need to grow and improve, but we don't sit back and expect, okay, we're going to pray that um, I'm going to improve or we're going to pray that I'm not going to be, um, get angry, you know, so easily. And God can supernaturally, you know, just take away the anger. Um, but oftentimes you also are expected to have that discipline within yourself to develop that habit, to not get angry uh, so easily or so often. Um, so we need the Holy Spirit to help us with that. Um, so that we are growing by making sure that we are thinking about um, what are our habits that we're developing, what are the good ones, what are the bad ones. Um, and we, we know that starting a good habit and ending a bad habit is pretty difficult. Um, and the primary reasons for that, right, is because we have our own flesh instinct that resists against that. And we also have the kingdom of darkness against us, right? In Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, it says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So when we decide and say, hey, I want to, you know, improve my relationship with God, I want to grow closer with God, we know that probably immediately the enemy is going to attack us or it's going to try and stop us before we can actually um, develop habits that allow us to make progress in that. And then in Galatians chapter five, verse 17, Galatians chapter five, verse 17, it says, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. 
for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. So not only do we have an active enemy outside of us working against us, but we have our own flesh that says, no, you should sleep in more and don't, you know, get to work or get to reading your Bible. Um, and so we know that, okay, if we have these things working against us, when we try to develop these godly habits, then we have to fight back against those things, right? We have to be vigilant, we have to be persistent, and we have to be smart <laughs> about how we uh, try and develop these habits, right? If people develop you know, an overall plan to do something, then research shows that if you break up that plan into smaller chunks, if you have actionable steps for you to do, um, then chances are that you will stick to it a little more. Um, so for example, like uh, we just will say that like, if you wanna develop a good habit, then having like a visual cue or having something to more easily remind you to do that can usually help. So if you are trying to go to the gym more often, then it can be suggested, oh, like put your gym clothes like out so that you see it so that you know, okay. And then like take it and go to the gym. I apply this too with like the Bible. I have copies of the Bible in like various places in my house so that I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, let me pick this up and read it. Um, and then like with the guitar, I actually like have it like next to me in my bed. <laughs> so that like, even at the end of the day, if I'm like so tired, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, let me like pick this up and like practice something, <laughs> right? Cause like, um, Again, we have these other things fighting against us, right? So we have to be smart. We have to figure out what are the things I can do to practically help me to resist and to do these things on a regular basis. Another like common advice is, you know, if you're trying to stop a bad habit, that you should replace it with a good habit, right? So instead of just saying, oh, like I'm not gonna drink soda every day, it's usually better to say, oh, I'm gonna make it a habit to drink water, like X amount of water every day. Um, and this kind of reminds me of Ephesians chapter four, verses 22 to 24. Ephesians chapter four, verses 22 to 24, where it says to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So we have the old self and we're trying to replace it with the new self. There's also a thing with habits where they, they kind of say something like, oh, fake it till you make it. So like, uh, they'll say like, oh, like um, if you want to be healthy, then you should be in the mindset of, oh, like what would a healthy person do like in this situation? Or if I'm trying to be someone who eats healthy, then what uh, do I do? As Christians, we don't need to fake it because we know the truth is that we are a new creation, right? God has uh, changed us through his Holy Spirit. Um, and so if we hold on to that truth, if we hold on to knowing that like, uh, we have the Holy Spirit to help us, to change us so that we don't need to fall back into our old ways, fall back into our old habits. Um, and that helps us to put us in that mindset to say like, you know, if I am truly like a child of God, right, then what would I do in this situation or in these circumstances? But as I talk about like habits, then it starts kind of getting into that area of like uh, self-improvement, which sometimes can be a little worldly or very like self-focused, right? A lot of, a lot of some of the habits I mentioned, um, some people might be saying, oh, like um, they want to go to the gym more because they want to look good and um, attract more people. Um, but as Christians, right, um, that we're not doing these good habits just because, right? Um, there's a purpose to them. Um, in Isaiah chapter 43, verse seven, Isaiah chapter 43, verse seven, it says, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created, I being God, for my glory, whom I formed and made. Colossians three, uh, chapter three, verse 23, Colossians three, verse 23, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. 
And then the verse most people know, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So as we think about what, you know, if you're thinking about what good habits can I try and form this year, we remember that the goal of it isn't just for ourselves, right? But the goal of it ultimately is for God and for his glory, right? So if we do want to become healthier, right, it could be that, you know, we want to take care of the body that God has given us, right? And we want to honor God with how we use our bodies and also just be given the strength so that we can carry out his will on earth, right? It's hard to do God's will when we're like very sick or can't move. Um, if your New Year's resolution or your goal is you wanted to develop a better financial situation, so you want to develop better habits like not spending as much money, not eating out as much, um, then it shouldn't be a desire out of like greed, like necessarily like, oh, I want more money, but it should be out of desire that we want to be good stewards of our money like God has commanded us, right? We want to be able to provide for our families to be able to give to others. Um, if it's to wanting to read the Bible more, um, then it's not, we don't want to do that just out of like a sort of either intellectual curiosity or we want to impress people or, you know, because someone told us to, so we're gonna do it. Um, but we wanna do it because we, again, want to honor God and we want to do these things for God and we want to deepen our relationship with him. And then ultimately, then we need to remember that um, if we do want to make these changes every day, these small changes, that it's God's power and it's Holy Spirit that we need to submit to in order to develop these good habits. And we all know like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Um, so more than like the people who don't believe in Christ who are trying to develop these good habits, we believe in Christ and we believe that he can help us to develop these good habits. So uh, what are some you know daily habits that the Bible kind of tells us to do? There's a whole bunch of them, um, but as I go through this list, maybe you can think of, you know, if you haven't already for this year, which one of these do you want to really focus on and ask God to work on in your lives, right? So we have praying every day and being thankful, right? First Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We've memorized that verse like so many times. <laughs> um, but also like praying in tongues, right? Because in First Corinthians chapter 14, 18, Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. So Paul himself had a habit to speak in tongues. Uh, reading the word, right? we read from that Psalm chapter one verse where it says that, uh, but he delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. So if you don't have a habit of reading his word, maybe consider starting that. Um, and then worship is a habit too. Um, in Psalm chapter 145, verses one to two, Psalm chapter 145, verses one to two, it says, I will extol you, my God and my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. So every day I will bless you, every day I will praise you. So worship shouldn't just be the thing that you see me doing on Sunday or like the one video that you see us doing on Wednesday, right? Develop the habit to worship God every day. It doesn't have to be like a four song, service um but we should get into the habit to make sure that we're putting in that effort every day to not only pray but to also worship him uh and then having joy philippians 4 4 it says rejoice in the lord always again i would say rejoice so having that habit to continually have that joy within you and uh reflecting that joy to others and then like we were doing today right um to have a habit of meeting with each other uh, and having fellowship with each other. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25, it says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So it's a good habit to meet together. It can, you can do it more than just on Sundays too, FYI. <laughs> um, but the point, right, is that uh, we want to get into that habit so that we can encourage one another. Uh, so uh, that's all I really have for you today. Um, so uh, 
hopefully this gets you thinking <laughs> and you know also ask god you know is there a certain habit that uh, i need to have in my life or that i need to remove from my life right ultimately god knows you better than i do <laughs> um so uh, pray to god for that uh dear lord god i uh, just thank you for this day lord i thank you for your word god, and i pray lord um that lord we know lord that um our walk with you lord is not a one-time thing lord but god it's a continual thing that we do lord every day and day by day so lord, we pray lord um in that day by day in the daily activities lord god that we would uh consider lord um doing the things that uh draws closer to you lord that we remove the distractions the uh unhealthy things that the enemy uh places in our lives sort every day but lord that we would develop lord these habits sort to uh do things lord to grow closer to you lord to mature in our faith lord um to not expect that um just you know one day or after a certain amount of time and suddenly lord um that we will be mature but lord that we take the dedicated steps lord uh to really focus in on you um and to really focus on being obedient to you and doing your will and Jesus name I pray. Amen. Anyone else would like to pray if you feed a do so? Thank you Father for the message that you gave us today for this life. And uh, help us develop our uh, good habits as we walk together. Father God, that come together to fellowship to one another and uh, even let me go as a meeting to be together. And uh, we thank you Lord uh, that uh, you will help us. We thank you for your presence and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for a wonderful word. God reminding us that we uh, have the Holy Spirit with us, so we put off for our own self that which is uh, belongs to the former manner of life, so that we can be light of this of our desire to come to uh, the Spirit, renewing us in our minds, so that we can serve you. We can uh, uh, read the word of God and that we can bless the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit every day. Uh, we praise your name, and uh, we know that Lord Jesus is, uh, uh, or as our brother said, and we share from his heart, it's nothing, uh, just uh, the result right, right away. But we need to be patient, we need to practice, we need to develop our maturity with the uh, uh, with with you uh, by the world by reading the world by praying by and uh, like anything else that we have to um, practice and we need to spend time because we know that Lord Jesus uh, without patience without practice uh, without um, dwelling in the world God if we are not going to be mature we cannot be uh, the man and woman that. We can hear the voice of God, so help us, Father Lord, at the new year, so that we can be a new cell, that, uh, that we are, uh, stay away from the bad habits, bad friends, bad companies, but we stay in the spirit and walk in the spirit, so we're not listen or fall into uh, this the, ourselves to be flesh and thank you Father Lord for uh, the word of God today and that uh, helping us and reminding us that we um, always have the Holy Spirit to help us but we have to strive and to develop our good habits by spending time with you in Jesus name we pray amen using Brian as the message to give her today for this uh, as he demonstrates to his life the uh, blessing and prosperity that comes from godly discipline and uh, and to show everybody that, that setting that example that uh, it's not just your intelligence it's not just your other capabilities but it's uh, following that pattern and establishing these uh, disciplined habits 
Um, it's not uh, a surprise that uh, our brother Brian has such success in music and life, uh, and it's something that we that we really desire uh, to come deeper with you and to grow as uh, as your gifted children. That we will uh, endeavor each day to build ourselves up, seeking first the kingdom of God. And Lord, we pray that we pray for freedom for those that are procrastinating, that are doubting, that are lazy. Uh, that they will be set free and take the first step and continue on diligently moving forward to the goal that you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, dear Lord, God, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Um, pray, Lord, uh, God, that you would uh, speak to us, Lord, individually, or uh, day by day, Lord, that we'd Lord, be able to hear your direction, Lord, for our lives. Um, I pray a blessing over the food, Lord. Uh, may it nourish our bodies. Uh, we pray for continued protection for Pastor Bill and Miss Jennifer. Um, and Lord, that you continue to guide them through your spirit, Lord, um, to Lord uh, minister uh, to those, Lord, that you want them to minister to. Lord, we thank you for everyone here. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.